So welcome back. In the last video, we have seen how to call a servlet from a servlet. So we can either use request dispatcher or we can use send redirect. In this video, we'll see. Uh, we'll just uh, go with the same example, but we'll just expand something. Now in this, what I will do is let me add one name. So let me get one more field. We'll say enter your name. Okay. And here, let me type it as text and we'll give name as T1. Okay, so I have a text field here and I need also need a break tag which will break the connection, uh, break the line. So I will be having a text field or text box, then a break and then a button. Okay, it will look something in this way. So it's my, it's my app. Okay, let me just go back and refresh. So this it will this is how it will look like. If I say the name is Navin and if I click on OK, so instead of printing in second servlet, I want to say welcome Navin. Okay. So for that what we can do is uh, so in the first servlet, instead of using response.send redirect, let me use uh, a request dispatcher. Okay. I think I have deleted the import, so we'll just uh, say Control Shift I. Now, so if I call this second servlet, the problem is this name T1, it will come here in this servlet, right? So I can access T1 here. So let's see how to access T1 here. So what we'll do is we'll take a string, str, and how to fetch data. So whenever you send a request, it, the data will be in request object. So I will say request dot get parameter and in this we have to mention the name of the field which is t1 okay so you can see we have t1 here so data will be coming from this html page to the servlet in t1 tag and then we have to fetch an str and and we'll print here itself we'll say s out and we'll print str okay just for the demonstration and if i run this now go back to this and if I say Navin and if I click on this OK button so you can see it's calls in second servlet because we are not printing anything on the web page I'm printing on the console so let me go back to the output window and here so you can see there's there's something called Navin so that means we can access the data which is in the text box in the first servlet let me try the same thing let me just cut this thing here cut and let me paste the same thing inside second servlet. We'll see if it is work in this in this position. So let me just go back to my page. And if I say Navin and OK, so it says second servlet. If I go to my console, okay, and you can see it is saying Navin. Okay, that means we are able to pass the data from from the first page to the last page. Okay, and how it's working? We are sending data in T1, which goes to this servlet in the request object, and then you're sending the same object, the same object to second servlet in this fashion. Okay, so we are saying forward, so you're sending the same object. And this object goes to second servlet here, and then you're able to fetch the data. That means you can you can send T1 from the first servlet to the last servlet. So it's working, right? Now let me go back, let me just comment this part and let me use response.send redirect which also sends a request, right? And when I run this, so it says enter your name, I will say Navin. And if I click on OK, it says in second servlet, let's see the console window. And you can say the output is null. Question is why? When you send a request, when you click on this OK button, it will create a request object in which you'll be having T1. Cool. It will go to the first servlet. Now first servlet says, OK, I have this object request, but doesn't matter. I'm not using that request. I'm just sending a response to a client saying go to second servlet. So this response will go to client and client will create a new request which will go to second servlet. So this request is not the request in the first servlet. So this is the new request. And in that new request, it, we don't have T1. T1 was there in the last request. Right, and that's the problem. Then question arises: how to solve this. I want to get this T1 in this file also. So what we can do is, 
basically we have to work with different scopes by default we are working with the with, we are we are working with the request scope which means your data will be there only for the request scope which is this one as request changes your data will be gone now what we need the second type of scope we can use is session okay now this session session will be there throughout your example exam you know when you run when you go to facebook when you log into your facebook you can access multiple pages without even login you know what you have to just log in once and then you can you can you know navigate throughout the website you can click on any link and you don't have to log in once again because you are in the session now if you say log out then it will you know it will invalidate the session so if i click on ok so it will go to the second servlet from first servlet to second servlet and they will be in the same session so what i will do is instead of using request scope let me use like session scope how to use session scope you have to first create object of http session which is the interface let me import the package okay so if i go to http session it's an interface with lots of methods so you can see we have lots of methods we will be using this method which is set attribute and we will be using get attribute cool so let me create object as will say session itself now question arises how to create object of http session which is the interface right so what we can do is we can use request dot there is a method called as get session now get session is responsible to give you object of http session cool and let me add that data which is uh, this request object t1 first of all let me just get that t1 here so we'll say string str equal to uh we'll say session or no session we have it is in request object so we'll say request dot get parameter and we'll fetch it from t1 now once you got that data from t1 which is str i will put that data into session now how to put that data into session we have to say set attribute we have to mention a key what you saying also to say a label so we'll say this label as t1 okay just for the name we we are using t1 and the data we are passing is str so this str we are passing here the label for that str is t1 okay so now we are into session now what we have to do is in the second servlet we have to fetch that data now how to fetch we don't we cannot fetch from request right is because in request we have a new request now but we are in the same session so instead of request we have to say session okay now this session it's an object of http session we have to create out that object here also so we'll say session from the current session so we'll say request dot get session okay and then okay we have to import the package package imported okay now when you work with session see here when you work with session we are setting the attribute okay that means in this file we have to get the attribute so we cannot set we cannot get the parameter we have to get the attribute okay which is t1 but the problem is this get attribute will give you object we what we want is string so we have to convert this object type into string type by using two string method and that's it now once you got the data you can print it so let's try so let me go back to this file let me say run and it says it's passing a name i will say navin and if i click on okay it says second second servlet let me go back to console and the last file you can see the answer is navin cool right so because we are in the same session but i don't want to print it on the console i want to print it on the files so instead of printing in second servlet i will print uh welcome and plus str okay so we have made some changes let me go back to my file let me refresh this page i will say this time navin and if i click on okay it says welcome navin cool so we are sending a data from the html page which goes to first servlet and the second servlet and throughout this session we are maintaining the same data okay and how to do it with the help of http session so that's it from this video so in this video we talked about request scope and session scope in the next part we'll talk about application scope okay so thanks for watching and do subscribe for for the videos